Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to 52 Miniatures. One of the big things about kit bashing for me is to use miniatures and bits I have lying around that I'm not using. Cut them up, assemble again in a different order, creating a thing that I now will use. It's fun and it's cheaper than buying new minis. So I wanted to show some kit bashing based on stuff I got out of the one kit. A very large kit, admittedly. But I'd say a box, like the Dominion box for Games Workshop's Age of Sigmar, is likely to be something one buys relatively soon after getting into the miniature hobby. Regardless of the game system, a starter box with two factions, rules, that kind of stuff, is a tempting start for a lot of us. But may also result in a lot of unused grey plastic. Quite a bit of what's in this box is going into my Stormcast army, but there are a couple of miniatures I will not be using. Also, at the same time, I'm in need of a general, a Lord Relictor. The single hero miniatures from Games Workshop are quite expensive. Besides, I don't think the original model suits my style, even though it's rather cool. My plan is thus to kitbash together a Lord Relictor from some of the bits I'm not using out of the Dominion box. What I need is a priest carrying around something that looks a bit like a relic. That's sort of what the original model does. When kit bashing, I try to have a conceptual idea first. Priest looking lady with menacing relic. Check. After that, it's kind of up to the bits to decide. After a great deal of squinting, I found two models that looked like they could be bashed together. A priest is, after all, an underqualified wizard with a slightly more fanatical outlook on life. No pointy hats and sequins, rather dignifying rope and robe. And a stern look that says, I can't turn you into a newt, but I sure as a lower level of hell can read long passages out of my holy book until you fall asleep on the battlefield and then I will hit you hard with my relic, repeatedly. Removing the cool bits from the wizard lady, like the Darth Vader death grip hand, the coolest head in the entire Dominion box, adding them to the much more somber creator miniature. Kit bashing miniatures from Games Workshop is sometimes easy and sometimes not. New models often have quite a complex bit structure, so that one has to assemble first to then cut into bits. When kit bashing, the tools I use are pliers and a snap blade knife for the dismembering, plastic cement or sprue goo for reassembly, sometimes green stuff or milliput to fill extreme gaps. If you don't know what sprue goo is, I'd recommend a YouTube search. Super glue can be handy for instant adhesive needs, like when your fingers have been separated for too long. Also, tweezers are great for handling tiny stuff. Essentially the same type of tools you need to assemble out of the box miniatures. Kit bashing for me, apart from the pure fun of it, and in this case saving some money, is of course to create a miniature that is unique. A miniature that fits my style and that visually fits into my army. An army that is already kit bashed and customized to a certain degree. Cutting things to bits can feel like a scary thing at first, but as long as there is no excessive amounts of impulse involved, things very rarely go wrong. For major parts, torso, arms, legs, I like to dry fit before I start gluing. Making sure I have all the bits I need and that they fit, kind of, before assembly. Then, once the majority of the miniature is assembled, see if I can add any embellishments. Like my priest, General, will be getting access to a holy book. I mean, it's very important to her to aid her on the battlefield in getting people to fall asleep out of boredom. If you really feel like kit bashing, but maybe you don't know where to start, or you're a bit afraid of ruining miniatures, you really want to kit bash properly. So you want to get a bit of experience before starting on the real thing then try and find some really cheap miniatures on eBay, or if you have a second-hand miniature game store. Something to experiment on, preferably bits that you might also be able to use in the future for the army you're working on. But I'd say, after being in the hobby for a little while, there's bound to be a few miniatures lying around that will not ever be used. So start on them. 
Rather than letting the little plastic folk mess with your conscience, the miniatures you just never get around to paint, cut them up, like Dr. Frankenstein would have said, use them for bits. And besides, the likelihood of official complaints about not getting painted will be considerably lower when faced with the snap blade alternative. There are other alternatives to customizing miniatures without spending all that much money in the process. Say you're starting fresh with a small box of miniatures, you don't have anything else from that faction but you still want to add your own ideas, thoughts and look to the miniatures. I'd say a great place to start is a head swap. Heads can be quite cheap, just ask your local butcher, I guess because there's not so much meat on them. Uh, no, but buying a set of new heads just drastically changes the look of a mini. I have a slightly Roman theme going in my Stormcast army, the Owlcast as they're called. My massive protector paladins get gladiator heads. This set of 10 Max Mini Resin Gladiator Helmets cost £6. Another great way of getting some personal input on the look of one's miniatures is just to choose how to assemble what's in the box, to stray from the assembly manual, and to physically alter sculpts along the way. These paladins are real tanks, shoulder pads the size of malnourished goblins, with also spikes and flashes of lightning decorations all over. The more is more rule uh, proved wrong. I scraped off all the fancy decoration stuff with a hobby knife. The flashes of lightning are no more, making the paladin look more medieval and less high fantasy. Secondly, I just don't use all the bits. Whatever feels over the top, I don't put on. I skipped the shoulder pads. This can lead to proportions getting a bit wrong. The mini is sculpted with a certain symmetry in mind, also a little uncomfortable probably for the mini, walking around with no shoulders. So to compensate, I intended to add something crafted, not something bought for money, rather something built from things I already have at hand, kind of. For some reason, I had this chainmail texture plate from Green Stuff World. It actually cost money. Only I can't remember when I bought it, so that kind of counts as free, right? Learning how to sculpt and alter miniatures with hand-sculpted details is very cool. Adding a beard to a face, sculpting a new pauldron, making a custom shield, all for free. My issue is it's uh, really difficult and uh, I can't sculpt at all. And honestly, I couldn't even get the green stuff and milliput mix to not just stick to me or the texture plate. I tried lots of different things, ratios of putty, using water, not using water, all kinds of things. But could just not get things to work out and eventually gave up. Instead of smearing green stuff all over the place, I went on to painting my general. Primed with Vallejo dark grey and then dusted heavily from above in a zenithal style with light grey. I like to have several projects going. My green stuff failure was slightly annoying. You know, chucks the green stuff packet at the closest wall available right eyelid fluttering involuntarily for a bit. But instead of walking away from the hobby table, I change what I'm working on. This can jump between painting, crafting, kitbashing, assembly of terrain, cleaning brushes. But I'm still doing something related to the hobby. Swapping out the failure or the boredom. I mean, let's face it, exceptional emotional reactions do not have to be the reason to want to quit the hobby session. Simple boredom will do. I think having diverse projects going can break up what sometimes feels like a bit of a loop sitting down in the same spot every time, staring down at the same little plastic folk. And I mean, it's not like they're great company, intellectually, for me, at least. Your mileage may vary. After painting my new general priest lady for a while, I was back in a better hobby zone. I thought of a tip a Patreon, Phil, passed on uh, in the 52 Miniatures Patreon Discord community. To use aluminium beverage cans as a source of good thin sheets of crafting material. Phil's specific example was to use the thin aluminium as a foundation for making cloaks, something one later on could add a layer of epoxy putty to if one wished. Cutting out a little cloak with a pair of scissors and being able to dry fit and bend is pretty cool. My plan was no cloak, I was to make a scale armor shoulder pad rather simply by cutting out little tiny scales and gluing them in place, starting from the bottom working up towards the head. 
This, I thought, turned out rather cool and felt great, too. I'm no sculptor, but I can rudimentary cut shapes, thus still feel like I'm sculpting and modifying, but in a, for me, more controllable environment. This feeling of success rubbed off on my paint job. I was feeling adventurous now. Testing a magical-looking paint job for the general, together with some kind of weird idea of a color loop, using similar colors on everything, just in different places and with different emphasis. A turquoise-style plate armor, kind of worn, so that it looks almost like verdigris. Copper details on the armor that definitely have been affected by verdigris. A very textured magical cloak that plays with the Roman purple, but at the same time changes in the light into the same verdigris color that's on the armor. A purple, magenta, blue, teal, orange, repeated here and there, all over the mini. By the way, the relic does contain a bit of a cheat when it comes to bits. I found a couple of bits in my bit box that I figured would work great. And so there's a few pieces there not from the Dominion box. There was plenty of stuff in the Dominion box. I could even have used some of the orc bits, who would miss a little hobgoblin. But what I had in my bits box just felt rather perfect. Being bold with new ideas when painting is a lot easier when in a creative mood. Another reasoning why I like to have several projects going at the same time. A success on one project can be the boost needed for me to try a new technique on another. A failure on one project can be forgotten by the comfort of yet another project, but that is very familiar territory and feels safe. And sometimes it's just good to be a bit stubborn. I tried the chainmail texture plate one more time, this time using Sculptor's Vaseline. I don't know what makes this Vaseline extra sculptor friendly, I've heard regular Vaseline or even cooking oil works as well. But I'm no pro, so tread with caution in the minefield that is this day and age. Home-cooked experts publishing advice on the internet, like the quacks of old. You won't know until you try, but it's at your own peril. With some chainmail hanging over the right shoulder, my gladiator warrior is complete. It's kind of weird looking in a good way. I need to do another four, probably working along the same lines. They will get gladiator helmets, at least, that's for sure. Pretty cool potential bodyguards for my general. The general received a final delicate oil wash with an indigo. I've used the same style oil wash on the other miniatures I've painted for the army, so it's a bit of a trick to keep them together a little. Same as with the base, painted up roughly the same as in the rest of the army. After a varnish, a few tufts were added, and now I have a general for my army. She's looking rather regal, if you ask me, quite fitting for a general. Kit bashing and the modification of miniatures can be done in many ways and it does not have to be expensive. On the contrary, it can be a way to put together plastic you will never use to use. Not only saving us some money, but also a fun and creative addition to the hobby. Thank you for watching. Please support by liking the video and writing a comment. For extraordinary support, please check out the 52 Miniatures Patreon. And yes, thank you. To my dear patrons, I'm honored to have you backing me up. Bye.